So you're new to fantasy basketball and got invited to a league on Sleeper. You want to dominate your league, but you don't know who to draft, who to pick. You are completely lost. In this episode, we will be conducting a 10-team lock-in mode mock draft on the Sleeper app drafting from the fifth position. We believe every NBA fan who plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. So here we are. We got our crew in the building. We got some people from our Discord just pulling up to make sure we provide some value here for people who are playing on Sleeper. I know there is not a lot of Sleeper content out there. As you know, if you have been a part of this community, we support all league types but especially people who are new to fantasy basketball for points leagues. So Sleeper is like the most basic joint. If you are new to fantasy basketball, this is a great starting point. The lock-in mode really gives you an opportunity to just really pick uh, one game that your player performs the best, and I'll do another video that will explain it a little more for you. But let's just start the draft. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah, I want to start. Okay, so we got my man Kyle, the bucket seven with the first pick. He better pick the Joker. I know that much out here in these streets, taking all these daggone unnecessary risks. People drafting Doncic, people drafting Embiid. I would say my man Zach Hanshu was on the show recently, and he likes Embiid over uh, Jokic. He thinks he's going to have a better year, which is really interesting to me. Curious to see what happens. So it looks like Kyle went to auto draft mode. That is not ideal, but we have all humans here. Um, Unlike some of the other platforms, there's not like a mock draft lobby here where you can just get up with, uh, you know, people to draft. You have to actually bring your people in. So here I go. Uh, This is a points league. Joel Embiid is still on the board. So for me, that is super, super valuable. Um, Not sure I would have taken Tatum there if I was Bando 16, but I, I got to take it, uh, Joel here. So I'm just grabbing. So we have Jokic off the board with one. Then we have uh, Luka, Giannis, Tatum, Embiid, SGA, Halliburton. Back to the queue over here. See what we got. Oh, we got Curry off the board with the eighth pick. And then with the ninth pick, we have Mutant grabbing Anthony Edwards. That is risky for me. But you know what? I think Anthony Edwards is due for a leap. I actually have been really high on him. His ADP was a lot lower than where it is at the time of recording this episode. We're right now a couple of weeks out from the NBA season starting, um, a little less than a month. But about two months ago, he was down, like I would even say in the late 20s, mid-20s. Now he's up there. He's moving up. I think he's like 15 or 16. I'm not sure off the top of my head. But for Sleeper, they have him pretty high. So he's off the board. And then we had some bonus after him. For points leagues, Listen, if you are drafting for the first time and have not ever heard, like we think about Steph Curry, we think about Damian Lillard, we think about LeBron James. If you are a points leagues player for the first year, you want to take a look at Sabonis. If you could get him at the top of the second round in a 10 man league like this at the at that back end of the um, first round is is OK, too, because there's a lot of depth in a draft like this. But Sabonis is someone you definitely want to target. Damian Lillard, Lillard is off the board with the. with the first pick in the second round. Then we have Anthony Davis off the board with the 2-2. Cottonwood is up. It looks like he's going to go into auto draft mode. That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. We don't, we, you never want to see that. You never want to see that. Then we have uh, Kevin Durant off the board. I love KD this year. A lot of people are sleeping on him. Then we got Vic the Web and Yama off the board. A little too early for my taste, but I, I understand why. So for me here, I'm looking at LaMelo Ball right here. Uh, Again, another player that I think is going to perform extremely well, has first-round potential, uh, traditionally has first-round value even. Uh, The other people I would be looking at here would probably be uh, Kyrie Irving. But let me go ahead and just grab LaMelo to be safe. So after Victor Webinyama, we had Devin Booker. I think it might be a little early for Booker. Then I grab Ball, which I'm happy with that pick. Donovan Mitchell, I think that's a great pick in the second round of a 10-man league. Might be a little too early for LeBron James, who goes off the board next. 
And then my man, David Vega. David Vega is a sniper. He is a, a believe in fantasy aficionado. He don't play no game. So he grabs Trey Young. I love that pick. That's a great pick. Kyle the Bucket is back up. Kyle, please tell me you're here, man. I hope you're not like, don't, don't be, don't hit us with the robot moves, man. Don't, 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 don't hit us with the two-step robot. Thank you. Kyrie Irving off the board. Love it. And then Kyle the Bucket has a back-to-back pick. His team is looking official. He got Jokic. Irving, where is he going to go next? Let's see what's on the board. I would be looking at Carl Anthony Towns here. I'll be looking at Jaron Jackson Jr. here. I would probably be looking at Cade Cunningham here. So if Cade Cunningham falls to me, I'm going to snatch him up. That's somebody that I'm going to reach for in draft just because I believe he's going to turn around some first round value if all the stars align in Detroit for him. Motor Cade is not playing this year. So for me, that's who I would reach for a little bit here. According to Sleeper's ADP, he shouldn't be going this early. I'm okay with taking him in this area. After Carl Anthony Towns, we had Jalen Brown. Then my man Bando16 is in the building. Quick shout out to everybody who pulled up for the draft. Kyle the Bucket, David Vega, Ewick, VV, Bando16, Noodle Fan, Hey, 0613, Cottonwood, The Mute 44, and You Smell Like blank. I'm not sure exactly what you smell like. Oh, I'm up. Shoot. You got to get focused, Robin. Oh, so Kay's here. I'm grabbing Kay. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to blink, like, grabbing him there. I'm, I'm okay with that. And that's the thing about these fantasy basketball drafts, especially if you're new. Get your guy. Like my man Dan Titus says, get your guy. You don't want to walk away from the draft being like, oh, man. I, I'm, I wish I would have got Lillard. Man, I really wanted to get Lillard. Now, don't get me wrong. That that can also be to a detriment if you are, in fact, a homer, right? So if you're like, yo, I'm a Milwaukee fan and I want to grab Giannis. I want to grab Dane. Let me reach for Chris Middleton. Is Brooke Lopez? That, 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 that might not work because those guys are all going to be playing on the same night. So you want to make sure you like you know, pace yourself when it comes to grabbing your guys and just try to make sure all your guys are not on the same team. Let me get a uh, quick sip of this drink and then I'm going to give you guys that recap. So we have after Cade coming, cutting him, we have Mikael Bridges, which I love that pick. Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Darry, uh, De'Aaron Fox, and then you smell like blank is up right now. Jimmy Butler, y'all see Jimmy Butler hair? Man, Jimmy Butler went full on emo. And he's he's actually like playing it up because on his social media, he has one of those like, you know, those emo songs playing on one of his videos. So he's like, he's totally trolling us, guys. He's totally trolling us. Uh, after De'Aaron Fox, very interesting pick. We had John Morant off the board. I am... Not okay with drafting John Morant this early, but if you build a strong enough squad, that could work for you. If you put him in your IR and you just sit tight, patient, it could really work out for you. So let me get focused because I'm up in a few picks, and this is the part of the draft where talking and announcing you know, what's happening can come back to bite me in the butt. So I'm going to give you a hint. I'm actually going to reach a little bit for my next couple of guys because, again, these are players that are my guys that I'm looking at. So I'm eyeing here. I'm eyeing two guys here. I'm going to be eyeing Evan Mobley, and I'm going to be eyeing Chet Holmgren. If I could get both of those guys, that would be a that would be clean up on aisle five. I'm picking from pick five. That would be clean up on aisle five if I could, in fact, grab both Mobley and Holmgren. Holmgren has crazy position availability here on Sleeper. Yo, he's playing small forward, power forward, and center? That is insane. Quite literally insane. I am all about that life, man. Sign me all the way up. I'm up. I'm about to get Evan Mobley right now. So I'm going to grab Evan Mobley. Oh. Excuse me. What the? Can I just draft him? Yep. I just want to draft him. Cool. So let me do the recap. So after John Morant, we have Pascal Siakam. Eh, not so crazy about that. Kawhi Leonard. If you know me, you know I am not trying to draft Kawhi Leonard. The, 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 the value could be all the way there. I still might stay away from him, but I'm not mad at it. I understand risk 
versus reward here. Zion Williamson, very similar story. I, I was super high on Zion uh, last year. And, you know, when he plays, he's an, like an undeniable force of nature. But he don't play. He, he be out all the daggone time. You know what I'm saying, man? So be careful. Desmond Bain, uh, pretty high on him. I, I, I like him around here. Brandon Ingram had some injury risk for the last few years. And Chet Holmgren is off the board. So that's fair. Um, but not there. After Ingram, I grab Mobley, Bankero, Brunson, then Holmgren. David Vega, of course, grabs him. That's my guy, so I'm not mad at that. So let me start thinking about what my backup pick would be. Darius Garland is falling right now. Currently, I have uh, Lonzo Ball. I'm looking at Laurie Marketing. That's value that's kind of falling down. Uh, Chris Porzingis, DeMar DeRozan, who is one of the most consistent fantasy basketball players that you'll ever find. Jared Allen is another guy I'm interested in. OG and Anobi. So there's, there's still a lot of good stuff here, but I'm going to just go ahead and get the value. So now with in a 10 man league, I'm about to be, you know, in the fifth round looking like I can grab Lloyd Markinen. I think I might just go ahead and take him. Also interested in Julius Randle here as well. So I'll be looking at Markinen, Randle, or even Garland if, if he uh, falls. To me, Garland's off the board, so that's no longer an option. Actually, after Chet here, we had Paul George go off the board. So Paul George, Darius Garland, and now my man David Vega. If I had to guess who David Vega was going to go, he's going to go with Randall. Oh, he went with marketing. He went for the value. He went for the value. So I'm going to grab Randall here if he's still available, and then the backup plan would probably be DeMar. I like DeMar DeRozan. He, he's pretty healthy, and again, one of the most consistent fantasy producers that you'll ever get here on Sleeper. One thing you want to be mindful of, guys, especially if you're new to fantasy basketball, people who have um, position, positional availability for multiple positions like shooting guard, small forward, power forward, which DeMar DeRozan has, increases his value because it's almost like the Swiss Army knife approach when you're doing fantasy basketball. So somebody like DeMar his value is a little higher. So I'm tinkering between Julius Randle and DeMar DeRozan. I feel like Julius Randle is just a more solid uh, option here, especially with the value. Uh, even though I'm kind of stacked at, at, at my bigs, I don't have an official power forward. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab Julius Randle. If I can get DeMar DeRozan on a turn, I'd be happy. I doubt he makes it back around to me. Let's get back to the recap. After marketing, we had uh, DeJounte Murray. Then we had another Murray, another Murray Harry, Jamal Murray. Then we had Julius Randle. And now my man Noodle Fan is up. He's probably going to be looking at Chris Porzingis here, DeMar DeRozan. Scotty Barnes is popular. Um, I'm not so high on Scotty Barnes this season. Uh, I know many of us kind of give him that rookie of the year pass. Well, I'm not sold on it. I, I'm, I'm not really that interested. I am interested in Fred Van Vliet, and I think Fred Van Vliet being someone that I draft in the sixth round of a 10-man league is super, super valuable. So I'd be interested in taking him here. After Randall went Levine, Barnes, Giddy. I said Barnes, right? Barnes is going to go off the board. Giddy, Vucevic, and then You Smell Like Blank is up. It looks like DeMar DeRozan is still on the board, not for long. Just snatched up by You Smell Like. Kristaps Porzingis is on the board. Jordan Poole. Bradley Beal, Fred Van Vliet, Scoot Henderson might be a little too early for a rookie. Really interested in Jared Allen, uh, Alfred Shingun. OG and Anobi here is interesting to me because of his positional um, you know, availability. He, he has a ton of different positions he's playing. So OG is playing shooting guard, power forward, and small forward. Definitely interested in him. Jared Allen is off the board after DeMar DeRozan, which I think is a great pick by You Smell Like. He cleaned up in that um, that back-to-back -back pick section there. The Mutant 44 is up. Looks like he might be eyeing Bradley Beal, Fred Van Vliet, and he grabs Jordan Poole. Love it. If I if if Fred Van Vliet falls to me, I'm going to grab Fred Van Vliet. Um, even though I'm kind of stacked at guards, it's all good. Like, you know, you got to do what you got to do. For me, I'm all about taking the best player available in points leagues. Uh, category leagues, not so much. Fred Van Vliet is off the board. So I have to pivot quickly. I'm not so interested in Miles Turner, Krista Porzingis. Uh, I think I'm going to go with OG Ananobi here. 
A, because he pours in uh, points in so many different ways, but also the fact that he has the uh, the positional availability that really makes him a, a valuable asset. So I'm going to grab me some OG here, and we'll get to the recap. After the pool, we had Beal, Van Vliet, Turner. I grab Ananobi, and Bando 16 is up. Let me get a quick sip of this drink. After Ananobi, we had Scoot Henderson. I think Scoot Henderson is going to be valuable, especially with us knowing what's happening with Damian Lillard this season. Scoot is going to bring the ruckus like the Wu-Tang Clan. Then we got Porzingis off the board with the 6'8", with the eighth pick in the sixth round. And then my man David Vega is up. If I was a betting man, I would bet he would grab Alfred Shingun here or Nick Claxton. Alfred Shingun or Nick Claxton. I know my man David Vega. I know how he thinks. He's going to grab Shingun. Oh, he grabbed Jalen Williams. I'm not mad at that. That now, whew, man, that, that's a good pick. All right, I am not mad at that one bit. The guy I'm going to be looking at here is Walker Kessler. I am super high on Walker Kessler. So high on him that I would take him in the seventh round with people on the board like Drew Holiday, Kyle Kuzma, Alfred Shengun, Nick Claxton even. I want me some Walker Kessler. And I know if I don't take him now, he will not come back around. If you're new to fantasy and you're a casual NBA fan and you've never heard of Walker Kessler, he's a second year player from the Utah Jazz who put in work last year. He only averaged about 20 something minutes a game, but people believe many of the um, fantasy basketball analysts in the, in the industry believe that he's going to take a leap this year. So I want to get in on that. That's a risk versus reward play. And I believe that it will be the reward more than the risk. After Jalen Williams by David Vega, Nick Claxton went off the board to Kyle the Bucket. Kyle the Bucket had a back-to-back -back pick. He grabbed Kyle Kuzma, and then David Vega grabbed Franz Wagner. E. Wick double V is up, and he's probably going to grab Tyler Hero or Shingun. Oh, he's going to auto draft. No, he grabbed Simons. I don't know about that one. Eh, that that one, I'm I'm not crazy about that pick. I'm not crazy about that pick. So I'm up. It looks like Kessler's still on the board. So I'm going to grab my guy, bring him on home to the to the headquarters. After Simons, we had Aiton. I grabbed Kessler. The noodle fan is back up. Let's do a full screen on his board so you guys can see kind of where we've been. And while we do that, let me take a, a, a little bit of time to just tell you about our sponsor for this episode. This episode is presented to you by Bet Online. Football is back, and Bet Online is your number one information source for all your sports wagering info with all the up to the minute stats, news, scores, and matchup breakdowns. Get the latest game odds, spreads, and totals from the NFL and college football at your fingertips. From week one all the way up to the college football playoff and Super Bowl, Bet Online gives you access to the best football promotions and contests available anywhere online. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Remember to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. Just to go back to the recap, we had Walker Kessler off the board, then Noodle Fan grabbed Maxi, Jalen Green is off the board, Gobert, now the Mutant 44 is up. The Mutant is up. Let's get it, my Let's see what we got here. The mutant is gone down to the wire. Three, two. Oh, he's going to auto drive. Oh, no. He grabbed Dinwiddie. Heck to the no. I am out on Spencer Dinwiddie in the seventh round of a 10-man league on a sleeper app. New, no, buddy. No, 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 no. You smell like it's up. He going to have a power pick. I, this, this much I know. He, he don't play. He, he's coming down to the wire. He grabbed McCullum. Eh, eh. How do I feel about McCullum? Not super crazy about him. I think that his age is going to catch up with him. You know, he's not going to be the same guy that he was. Now, if Zion is out, if Brandon Ingram is out, will there be more opportunity for him? Absolutely. But I don't like to make my drafts based on what might happen. Just knowing him in terms of per game value and him aging and slowly declining. I'm out on McCullum. So I wouldn't have drafted him with some of these other players on the board. Tyler Hero, 
Heck to the nah. No. I'm just out on Tally Hero. People get on me all the time about that. First of all, I'll say this. Tally Hero is an exceptional basketball player. Exceptional. One of the best basketball players in the world because not so many people can make the NBA. However, for fantasy, for fantasy, I am all the way out like a pointed out belly button. I don't know why I said that. Anywho, after Tyler Hero, we had Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, former teammates, Shangun Wiggins, and I'm up. I got 20, 29 seconds. Let me get focused. Did not have some. Oh, I like Jeremy Grant here. Uh, yeah, I like Jeremy Grant here, even though he might get moved. I like Jeremy Grant here. Oh, I like Chris Paul here, too. I'm going to just go ahead and grab me some Jeremy Grant. And Jeremy Grant is probably my least favorite pick of this draft. That He's probably the guy I was least prepared for picking. If Jeremy Grant does what he did last year, I'll be happy with that. The only issue I have with Jeremy Grant is that if he gets traded and goes somewhere else, his fantasy value might go into the toilet really fast. So if you're new to fantasy and you're drafting on a sleeper app and you're looking at Jeremy Grant, I would be very careful. That is a risk versus reward scenario that the risk is associated with the potential of the trade. If he's moved, if he's moved, his value will most likely take a hit. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm concerned about that pick. So after Jeremy Grant, we had Keegan Murray, Russell Westbrook, Devin Vassell, who just secured a huge contract. I think he's going to get like $29 million a year, which is great for him. Blessings on blessings on blessings. Uh, Keldon Johnson off the board. Yaka Pertle off the board. Oh, man. I would have rather had Yaka Pertle than Jeremy Grant, honestly. I love me some Yaka Pertle. Uh, and then we have Wendell Carter, um, Wendell Carter Jr. I'm going to go to the queue here and, and line something up so I'm not looking crazy for my next pick. Uh these are the scary hours. So I'm okay with Chris Paul here. I'm okay with John Collins here. It might be a little too soon for Ben Simmons, but I want Ben Simmons. I just want him later, later, a lot later. Uh, staying clear away from Colin Sexton. Keep him away from me. I like Miles Bridges this year. Oh, I really like Miles Bridges this year. Uh, but I'm going to grab me some... Uh, you know, I don't have any rookies yet, so let me shake it up a little bit. Let me let me grab Brandon Miller. Let me grab Brandon Miller, and then on the turn, if I can get Chris Paul, then I'll try to get Chris Paul. Wish me luck. I'm in there. Back to the recap. After Window Carter, we have Clay, Yuck. Rozier, Brandon Miller, the youngin, uh, Cam Johnson, and then my man High 0613 is up. I'm going to add some more people to my queue here. So... It looks like I, I'm going to just add Ben Simmons to my queue because I don't want to let him get lost in the sauce. Uh, also interested in, definitely interested in Markel Fultz. There's a lot of buzz in fantasy analyst circles. I'm on a group chat with some of the most well-known, amazing, welcoming, but established writers in the fantasy basketball space, and mad people are high on faults. I'm not so high on him, but at at some point in the draft, I'll definitely be looking at him. And this is kind of that area. Mark Williams, another guy I'm really high on. Ayeka Akangwu. Uh, Trey Murphy would be nice. This is a good tip um, if you're new to fantasy. Injured players have value, right? So late in your draft, if you can get a player like Trey Murphy and then you're stashing him, so if you can get him with your last pick and then stash him in your IR, then you can go back and grab somebody else. Your last two slots, you could like rotate players out. You know what I'm saying? You could still stream in the locked, in the lock in mode for sleeper. Let me get focused. So where we at here? Man, people just taking my players? Man, they got John Collins. Let me do this recap. So after Cam Johnson, we had Jamari, Jabari Smith. Austin Reeves, uh, Michael Porter Jr., Mikel Fultz, they got me. John Collins, they got me. Man, who's next? Chris Paul? Let me guess. Chris Paul is next, right? 
you guys can't be serious with this, man. You guys are killing me. Nurkic off the board, Draymond off the board, Ivy off the board. Mm, you guys are killing me, man. You guys are hitting me in the face with the fantasy basketball Billy Club out in these Pete, these dag on digital streets. RJ Barrett is people are passing on him. He is built and made for points leagues, guys, especially in a format like locked in. Locked in is like, let me get focused. Chris Paul is on the board. I'm taking Chris Paul. I ain't messing around. In 20 minutes, Chris Paul could like deliver some like fifth round, sixth round value. I got him in a 10th round. That is value. Back to what I was saying about RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett is the kind of player that pours in buckets, points. So for a points league, he works. And the thing about the lock in mode that I really like um, better than the, the game pick mode, which was their original, you know, one decision play that you could make where you had to like lock in the player. And then that was the player that you picked for the week or the, uh, the game. I'm sorry, the game that they were playing for the week for lock in mode. You could pick a player's best game and you could wait until their last game of the week or you could grab it early on in the week. The, the the one caveat is that you can't pick a game that already passed. So you have to lock in the score the, before the next game starts. I should say not pass. But so once a game finishes, let's say Wednesday night, uh, Chris Paul plays, he scores 50 fantasy points. You need to lock in that score that you want added to your total before his next game starts. So, yo, it's just... People front on it like there's not so much strategy in it. There is strategy in everything in life, right? It's not as complicated as Roto. It's not as complicated as category, but it still requires a certain level of strategy. It's it's just a different, um, you know, level of strategy. Anywho, enough about that. Again, I'll I'll break down uh, the ins and outs of lock-in mode. If you guys want a video like that, let me know in the comments. Uh, Russell off the board after Paul. Then we have Gordon. Somebody took Simmons from me. Barrett's off the board. Amin Thompson, love that pick. Oh, my God, I love that pick. Matherin off the board. And then I'm going to start queuing up my guys. Looks like I got Mark Williams already, but I like Asar here. I like Asar just because I'm not going to let two Thompson twins go by. I'm going to get me one of them bad boys. So I went ahead and grabbed Asar Thompson. So I got the whole... Detroit backcourt thing happening right now. And then let me look at some other guys I want to add to my queue. I would be okay with grabbing Brooke Lopez in this area. This late in the draft, I'm totally fine with that. This is the 11th round. So right now we are looking at, uh, we everyone has two more picks left. So for me, if I could grab Williams and, you know, maybe grab Trey Murphy, then I would throw him in my IR. Actually interested in Tyus Jones here as well. Let me take a look at my roster and see how it's filling out. I don't have any shooting guards, which could be an issue, but I think Cade might actually play multiple positions. Yeah, so he plays, Cade plays power, small forward, shooting guard, and point guard. I'm good. I'm totally okay. I'm not stressing over it. And that's the thing. Um, Some of the other platforms have not let all of the chips fall in terms of what positions people are going to be playing. So it's really refreshing uh, to have a draft experience that kind of gives you insight on, you know, in what uh, capacity players are going to be utilized for their team. After, uh, where were we? Let's go back to Amin. After Amin, we have Matherin, Wood, Bridges, uh, Asar, Lopez, Heald, Clarkson, Harris, Williams, Jones, Smart, Adams, Brooks. And then I'm going to be up in a minute. So let me go ahead and cue somebody up. It looks like I got queued up right now. I got a Kong Wu. Is that what I want? I'm staying away from Derek White just because we got Drew Holiday coming to town. But even as a backup, he still has some value. I'm just okay. I'm I'm good. I'm not really trying to go there. Uh, am I on the clock right now? I am on the clock. I didn't even hear nothing, man. So a Kong Wu, Shaden Sharp. You know, th- these are scary hours in this area, man. You got to like just kind of do what you think is right. I'm going to grab my man a Kongu. I know I'm stacked at the center position, but you know what? I got to do what I got to do. And then with that last pick, I think I'm going to just practice what I preach. If I could stash a player like Trey Murphy, he's one of the most 
you know, elite, elite uh, threes, wings, you know, in the league, who doesn't get the recognition. He has been called the poor man's Mikhail Bridges, and now he's off the board. Somebody snatched him up. Dang, David, I told y'all about David Vega, right? He, he, he's like, this guy is in my head. Like, he's in my head. If you are in the Discord community and you need help with your team, if I'm not around, tag David Vega, yo. David Vega will help you. You can also tag Ant Tech, um, Chief White folks. We got some really helpful folks in the space. Let me see if I can swing for the fences. So with this last pick, for my folks who are new to fantasy basketball, you definitely want to swing for the fences on these. So Trey Jones is somebody I'd be interested in. Young guy trying to establish himself. Kelly Aubrey Jr., another person I'd be interested in trying out. But let's look at rookies only here and see if I could, in a couple of seconds, make a quick decision before that timer starts going off. Let's see what we got. Let's make it cool and sexy. No, it doesn't look like that. Kobe Bufkin. I'll take Kobe Bufkin. I don't got no shooting guards, but you know what? What? Let, let's see what happens. It's all good, man. And what I, I love this interface, man. It's some kind of beautiful, isn't it? Man, compared to some of the other platforms, like just drafting on Sleeper feels right, man. Feels like I'm doing the right thing with my time, the right thing for my life. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be in one lock in mode league this year. I've already committed to it. It's a it's a money league. So there'll be a prize at the end. Really excited about seeing what happens. Just to get back to the recap, uh, after we had Lopez, Healed, Clarkson, Harris, Williams, Jones, Smart, Adams, Brooks, White, Akongwu, Sharp, Portis, Gafford, Dick, Porter Jr. I don't know why you would draft him. He, he might be going to jail. Trey Murphy, Valachunas, Duran, Bufkin, I drafted him. That's sh shoot, like taking a swing for the fences. Jones, uh, Tyus, that is, or Trey, that is, my apologies. Herbert Jones, Rob Will, uh, Bogdanovich, Boyan, and then Walker. That is your draft. Man, that was fun. Let me quickly take a look at my team to just kind of let you guys know how I did. And I always rate my teams at the end. So I had Joel Embiid with my first pick. Yes. LaMelo Ball with my second pick in a 10-team league? Yes. Cade Cunningham? Yes. Mobley? Yes. Randall? Yes. And Anobi? Yes. Kessler? Yes. Jeremy Grant? Maybe. Brandon Miller? Maybe. Chris Paul? Yes. Asar Thompson? Maybe. I'm usually a maybe on rookies because I don't know what's going to happen unless it's Victor. I'll take Victor in the, in the middle of the third, but I'm not taking him in the second or first round. That's wild. Akangu, yes. Bufkin, maybe. Overall, I think I'm really top heavy, especially here through rounds one through uh, six here, seven even. Real, I feel really confident. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a four out of five GOAT rating. Again, if you need help or advice, drop your questions in the comment section below. I promise I will answer every single comment for this episode. And now that you're prepared for your draft and sleeper for the lock-in mode, play the waivers, set your lineups, and check out the next episode, you freaking fantasy nerd. <laughs>